Okay, my friend, are you ready? Sure. <laughs> okay, so I can record? <clears throat> sure. Okay, so welcome to Jump Off the Cliff. The one the only the only promise I can make you is that you're not going off the cliff alone. I'm jumping off the cliff with you. We're both gonna be falling together, so so if we're gonna create a set of wings and start flying, it's gonna be both of us. You're not on your own. Sounds good. Okay? Okay, here we go. The theme okay. is tipping points. Mm. So what is what is your understanding of a tipping point? Tipping point is the point of no return or the point after the fact. And so this is the transition period. So by point of no return, what do you mean? With a tipping point, you get to either in a period where there's no going back or it's the transition into something new whether good or bad gotcha okay and one of the things about tipping points i think that's a pretty good description by the way one of the things about tipping points is they compound so if you think yeah. about an exponential curve you can point to where the tipping point is where the curve like really takes off right so tipping points compound and if you can stack ticket tipping points so if you take several different tipping points and stack them together then you're going to compound your compounding so now we're talking about we're talking about some pretty substantial change here so we're going to try to stack a few tipping points okay okay so the first tipping point we're gonna talk about happens to be ice ages <laughs> as you called so <clears throat> do you know anything about ice ages not enough. Okay. And how do you know you don't know enough? How do you know that maybe you know just the right amount? I think my extent of Ice Age knowledge is the Disney movies, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so do you have any idea of how many Ice Ages the Earth has had? Um, wild guess five, maybe? How did you, how did you guess that? Lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, apparently... The Earth has had uh, five ice ages. There was a Serbian scientist by the name of Milutin Milankovic. And basically, his theory was that the gravity, the pull of gravity of the sun and the moon um, affects the Earth's tilt, right? Mm -hmm. And it also affects the Earth's motion around the sun. And there's a cycle that varies... The amount of solar energy the earth gets and this cycle happens about every 10,000 years or so so it's not like every year is the exact same cycle there are subtle slight shifts that only repeat every tens of thousands of years and so okay. Milliton came across this point and he at first thought that during one of these cycles or a shift we have this incredibly cold winter and all of a sudden the cold winter creates an ice age that was his original thought and then there was a Russian meteorologist by the name of Vladimir Koppen who dug into the work a bit more and he discovered a slight nuance. It wasn't the cold winters that caused ice ages. What do you think it was? The transition of the temperature and the movement between the two and so extremely warm summers. So we'll have a temporal shift there. Holy moly, that was pretty impressive. So uh, I, I can't say I understood everything you said. Like when you threw the word uh, temple or temporal or whatever you said, you kind of lost me there. But I think your I think your answer was pretty damn close. It's not okay, that what it, is it? it's not that it's a cold winter. It's mm -hmm. that it's a it's a slightly cooler summer. And what does a slightly cooler summer cause? An inversion. What do you mean by that? All these technical terms. So, oh my God, are you some kind of like... It's all the, ski it's all the skiing. It's really paying off. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean by inversion? Um, well, when you're used to having a warmer summer to, let's say, melt the ice, if you have cold winters, then if you have a cooler summer, then you have more ice being left over. And so therefore, it's not melting. Nailed it. That's exactly what it is. So you have a winter... You have a slightly cooler summer, therefore mm -hmm. just a little bit of that snow remains, right? So the snow doesn't mm -hmm. completely melt, just a little bit remains. And then what happens? 
builds up over time. And... Builds up over time. So now the next winter, snow lands on that little bit of snow that remains. So now you have more net snow. And then mm-hmm. that slightly cooler summer melts even less of that snow, right? And so yeah. now the following winter, you have a, more snow until you reach this tipping point where you have so much snow that summer barely happens because there's so much snow. So basically, when you start with a very little amount of snow, it compounds. Snow compounds. Mm-hmm. And it's a perfect example of starting with a base of a very small amount of something and then just let it compound over time. What, what's making you laugh on that? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, it's just, it's very relatable in two other aspects. <laughs> like what? Leaving emotions and compounding emotions. And... Oh, there you go. Okay. So what made you say that? That was cool. What made you say compounding emotions? Um, I think it's the inevitable of if you hold feelings in, then you get this build up, And if you leave things for a long period of time, then all of a sudden you see bursts of things. And so that's what in my mind, the relation between this compounding is. That's a that's a very good description. And can your emotional ice age, as, as you just kind of <laughs> described, does positive feelings compounding remind you of anything? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's vice versa of holding those feelings in. I think that when life gets busy and you're not able to appreciate those small successes and so then all of a sudden you can have that moment in time where you get a break and you're overwhelmed with that happiness because finally you're able to appreciate everything that's gone on. 